Okay, good, we're on. William. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for this having episode me. episode number one, and I think it's going to be called The Slum Society Show. These exciting times. You were eager to come on. Of course. I was eager to have you on. I was eager to just hang out, Connor. So Are you using any time. of these sweeteners? No. That's good, because there's only, there's only four, and I'm going to use every single one of those sweeteners. Really? And maybe one of those sugars as well. Life choices. I, um... Sometimes I always meet people for consultations like this, and sometimes I just put in an absolutely awkward amount of sweetness, and I wonder if they're judging me or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. So we're here to talk about fat loss, and you're going to have every bit of sugar you can find. Um, <laughs> these are no calories, bro. Oh, really? No, no calories. You're doing well. Yeah, 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 I don't mind. I'll get these. What's your views on artificial sweetness? Zero views, because don't have them. Uh, what, you don't use sweeteners? No, that's why, Well, that's why you didn't. No sugar either? No! Come like on, a, bro, what are you taking me for? I'm a Yorkshireman. Like a savage. And I'm sweet enough already. You should, that should have been your line. So you're drinking coffee with nothing, and I'm drinking tea with 15 sweeteners. Yeah. It was going to be black coffee as That's well, four but... sweeteners, really, by the way. It's hyperbole. <laughs> just for the people who are just listening and not watching. Yes, yes, it's and true. Then, I've got friends, you know, and they... They really don't like the way I make tea. Some of them protest, and then... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of... Uh, it's a tradition, when, especially when you're in New Yorkshire and in just England full stop, you need to know the ways. If you go in only like less than three minutes brewage, no good, get rid. I've got a friend called Matt Watson and he kicks off at the way I make tea. How do you make tea? You, well, if you've never before, before you sully his name, let me judge for, on your tea making well, skills. I've already noticed one. I've already started putting the sweeteners in the teapot, not in there. This and now, I was just thinking, this is why I mentioned it, because I was just about to get the milk and I just thought, the people, are, I wonder if anybody's going to judge me for this, because then I like yeah, to get no, the milk no. in that one. Oh, you can't do this. No, for the entire thing. That's going straight in there. You're the worst kind no, of person. No, 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 this is perfect. So now it can all stew together. You know, if I let that stew and then put the tea in there and add the milk, that's watering the tea down. I am also a Yorkshireman, so I want it as strong as possible. So I like to put the milk in last. Yeah. Thank you for coming down to the show anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. You, you've chosen a topic uh, and you want to talk about goal setting. Just bits and bobs. I think goal setting is pertinent to talk about. It is January mm. and everybody in my program set their goals yesterday, which okay. we can talk about if you want later. Absolutely. And I suppose by now most people have failed their New Year's resolutions. <laughs> yeah, well, we're getting close to February. That's a cut-off point. But first, if you don't mind, um, people what? what? <laughs> Just judging your tea still. I'm spilling it. To the it. brim! Oh, you're the worst. I'm spilling it slightly. I know, I'm going to spill this now straight on camera. Yeah, man, it's not going to work. That. Fresh jeans on. This it's is the only time face. I've ever seen him wear anything other than trackies. He's going to ruin them straight back to the track. I'm trying to be presentable. You look good. We're on the camera, William. You look good. I'm trying to be presentable. Yeah, no, I'm not. You Co won, you won. Coral turtleneck. I was going to say I was going to say salmon, but obviously my colour palette knowledge is smaller just, than you're yours. You're just not a sartorial. I wouldn't, so be, I wouldn't have even been able to pull out the colour colour coral. Yeah. That's also a tongue. It, it tried to stay in my wardrobe. I was like, nope, you're going on my body. <laughs> Get out here. Um, people watching this might already know who who I am, and they, they I suppose, some people might already know who you are, and if they don't, that's a bad mistake. I find it doubtful. They might do. Um, you've got local followers around Sheffield as well. We Thank used you. to work in the same place just over there. Yes, I know. Um, if you don't mind, I'll do you an introduction oh, good. of... You at least didn't just leave that and do me, so... Of do me an introduction. <laughs> and I'm carrying on, I know, it's pause for effect. Yes. Pause for effect. You, you, it, I, was, I was thinking though that probably for everybody that's going to come on the show after this, the, is that too hot? No, I'm good. <laughs> 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 so you wince in pain as you took that. I thought for the for the camera and the aesthetics of the show, it's probably going downhill from now because you are probably the best looking gentleman that's going to come on the show. Just like with the hair, it's a good job it's not down. Otherwise, Man. it's a good job you can't grow a beard as thick as this one. Otherwise, it'd be over. I, I think I'd go too far and take it one step to caveman it'd if I had be. a beard as well. That'd be too much. Just hair everywhere. It might do, but it's dyed, which is a modern thing. You've got oh, those cute little now highlights. You told them. In. You've got those now cute. They know. You can tell you've got cute little highlights in. They are cute though. Aren't they? they look nice. <laughs> they look nice. Um, I'll do a background introduction of Please what do. I know about Will Hukin, and then you can tell me whether I'm wrong or not. What do you think? Yeah, go for it. So, firstly, if anybody likes what you say, your Facebook page is called Will Hukin Body Architect. Fact. Is that correct? Yes. All right, good. And you make videos online, and I like them. Thank you. You've, uh, you've helped me on Aww. quite a few of the videos. I asked one about my hip. Uh -huh, I watched true. it three times. Oh. Uh, the hip's not fixed. But <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been for how long? I'm going to say seven years, yeah. but I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm trying everything. It's going to take I'm, a minute. I'm I have a similar issue to you, and mine, I only fix temporarily four times a week before I squat, and then it comes back the next day. What, well, the fix. squats aggravate it? Sort of, yeah. That's the same for me as well. Yeah. It only gets aggravated when I get about 
above 100 kg, which yeah. might not sound like loads, but I only weigh 70, so... You're a little man. It's... Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, in leanness. It, to me, that's heavy. Yeah. To yeah, me, that's yeah, heavy. It's true. Um, it's true. And when I start getting above that, it starts aggravating it. But anyway, um, you've done personal training mm. all of your life. Mm. Have, have you ever done anything except personal training? When I was 13, I worked in a fruit and veg <laughs> shop. <laughs> yeah, you did actually. I remember that. Uh, well, I remember you telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know you when you were 13, but I remember you telling yeah. me about that. But then, pretty much from 16, for yes. years and years and years yes. until now, yes. it's just been blasting it through every single day with zero days off on the personal training, like a savage. Yeah. I tried taking days off, didn't work. It's Straight back in at the deep end, didn't work. Didn't you're like, like it. me though, which is why we get on well. I like it. It doesn't feel like work to me. Technically, this is work. I know. I'm Look at me. Tea oh no, you. I'm so comfy and I've got a coffee. Mm. I'm so nervous about picking up that tea and bringing it to my face because I'm going to definitely just spill that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go everywhere. I've, sp I've filled it too high and I made a big palaver about the way I make the tea yeah. and now it's just going to go awful. No, like I'm going to leave it until it's cooled down. Um, because that's going to decrease its level as well. You're going to wait for it to evaporate. Is that what you're going to do? That'd be nice if it did, if it shrank slightly. <laughs> that'd be oh, appropriate. Um, you work at the gym group. I do. Kellam Island. I do. I also worked there. It's true. For many years. Yes. I, I worked there when you started. Yes, and I learned many, many things from you. Yeah, I, I, a, a little bit, yeah. Oh, and yeah, then no. now, now oh, to yeah. some extent, the student has become the master in some areas. And now I approach you to learn about training. Well, now we have our own things, yeah. Yeah, my, my... I didn't really mean it to, but my speciality sort of went down and became nutrition. Mm -hmm. And became more like clinical nutrition and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper where you you still do nutrition I yeah. still do training but you do training intense and that's your speciality and you yeah. go deep on the knowledge and you've been going so deep on the knowledge for years and years yeah. and years and years to the point where your your biological age is young but your training age is old and your training wisdom is ancient yeah literally you've got you've got the training wisdom of a 700 year old Ooh, I like that. But a young biological age you just but by by take it, it worked the same with anything in life i'm check that still it worked the same with anything in life if anybody blasted anything every single day with no days off from being 16 mm. until present of course you're going to yeah, be the no. best at it, it no it's the biggest question when when i'm training uh and it happens every day i, I can't train now without a minimum of maybe four or five people so here we go with the tea running commentary is he going to get it i wasn't bad a little bit mm. Spoil it on the floor yeah a little me. bit <laughs> that's not bad i've also noticed i've got this exact same rug at home are you serious yeah exact same same size it's like good. um i've seen one of the chairs here that's the same as the chair that i do my podcasts in from home oh really yeah honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously they've got good taste that's why we're here exactly. it's a beautiful place which we should mention we're at the gatehouse cafe oh, come down Kellum Kellum Island. have a drink this is one of my favorite places it's nice it's cute it is nice um homely good I think place for a podcast <laughs> Coincidentally, Ooh, Coincidentally. That. <laughs> I think it's nice because of the staff. Because I think you can go anywhere and get nice food. And oh yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not too picky. Well, I prefer quantity over quality. I'll be honest. <laughs> when it comes to food, you're a Yorkshireman, and I respect when, that. When it comes to the, food, if it's dirty and it's big, I'll eat it. The more you pay for food in general, the less I enjoy it. Because I've been honestly, I'm not even kidding. Because it, cause it halves in it size every time it doubles in price. And more confusing. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know what it is yeah. when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you pay above, if you're paying above what. 30 quid for a main, yeah. the possibility of me knowing what that is when it comes is almost zero. <laughs> Ooh, agreed. I, I, when it becomes, when it's, it's little circles of things, and then like a little- <laughs> A drizzle of some sh a, yeah. a stripe of coloured whatever. I'm no, like, what is this? No. I'm a carvery man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Six pound 95, yeah. you get that meat on there, you've got your protein I'm intake. just a carnivore. You get, <laughs> you get unlimited vegetables. Yes. With the carvery. Yes. Six pound ninety five. Agreed. That is what I Greasy enjoy. spoon across the road any day of the week. I'm going there on Wednesday. On the cafe. Me and Dave Pearson, shout out. Shout, shout out to Dave Pearson. Shout out to Dave Pearson. Another legitimate personal trainer. Very true. I should get him to come on. You should. Hopefully you will. Yeah. He, he cracks another mean beard. You'd be rivaled, I'll be honest. He's better looking than me as well, so I'm going to be mm. losing members every single time someone comes to talk to me. They're going to be switching over. He's not <laughs> on a Facebook page, does he? He doesn't. Good. <laughs> uh, stopping in his tracks. Good. He's going nowhere. <laughs> Uh, what I was going to say is where I'm not fancy with food. No, no, um, no, no, no. Where wherever I go, I'm basically getting eggs on toast anyway. <laughs> you know, if it's breakfast, yes. I don't care whether we're going to Most a greasy protein. spoon like you said. Mm. Um, it's always the move. Or, or to a really expensive place, I'm getting eggs on toast anyway because I'm just a basic man. And a lot of places have got nice interior, and this one is beautiful. It is nice and homely, but for me, it's the staff. 
here that are like they're letting us do the podcast here. Yeah, that's nice. They're letting us do the podcast here. <laughs> I know. The staff that work here are very nice. Anyway, the gym group uh, where you work is only just over there. Yes, we could throw your ass over there. Yeah, you run a personal training business from there. Yes. Um, also under the pseudonym Body Architect. W- Say that again. Also under Body Architect. Oh, is it oh, under the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, good. So under the same thing as the Facebook page. Recently been rebranded. Re got a new logo on it, which is quite, quite nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's a little snatch. Some guy at the bottom nice. of the squat. Ma- right. Made out of... Um, Cogs and mechanics to cover the bio uh, mechanical yeah, that side is, of things that I which like. Which is your specialty? Yeah, which is yeah, why I'm going like. down deep on things. I'm on hashtag pink logo. It's the best. No fear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pink, I mean, it's rivaling coral. I, you've got to do it. I'm trying to get it to set off my eyes. Oh, it works. Um, it's bringing them out. So you run a personal training business from there. Mm-hmm. You do nutrition and you do training with yeah. people. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about. If somebody came to the gym group, what kind of client would you work with? Are you, are you working with beginners? Are you working with hardcore weightlifters? Are you working with overweight people? Are you working with injured people? All at the minute, actually. All of them. All that you just listed. All of them. Yes. Literally, you, that's uh, not even an exaggeration. Yeah. Overweight covers <clears throat> most people in the sense that they're not overweight um, socially, but only in their own head, in that they're just fatter than they want to be. Which is me as well, that's everyone, isn't it? Everyone wants that to be That is leader. everyone, you Everyone right. wants to be Wait, well, you're, you're gonna have to go back, what? So, you, what do you mean they're not overweight socially, like? As in, by if you, if you a clinical them, definition, you... maybe. They're not overweight. Oh, so they're not clinically overweight, yeah. and... What, if you looked at, you're saying if it's socially, you mean if you looked at them, you wouldn't think they were overweight, but they've still got weight loss goals? But they're just fatter, so, fatter than they want to be. Are you insinuating that you work with people that are already starting slimmer? Or what? Covers every every range. So you work right. So you work with people that got larger weight loss goals as yes. well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Both, and that is a pretty much that's a more or less continuous through all all the clients I've got. Whilst for, for some it's like the main goal, and others it's just the secondary. A secondary goal. Yeah, like you remember mm. Mr. Karthik. Karthik Peri Peri Akarupia. There you go. Yes, Dr. I Karthik, do. Dr. Of Karthik Peri Akarupia. One of the best looking. All, all I'm talking about on this show is how good looking men are. This is going to come out questionable. Yeah, man, you but I was to. just going to say he's one of the best looking Indian men I have ever seen. Also yeah. with a phenomenal beard. I, yeah, I don't know that we need to close him off to the Indian bracket. He's a good looking guy. He Full is. stop around the globe. All right, yeah, there he is. All right, I will accept that as well. Yeah. I started him off on his weight loss journey. You've carried him on, and he looks awesome. And now he looks absolutely and now awesome. He's copied me. He's got long hair <gasps> and a beard. Really? You can tie it back now. It's awesome. It looks so good. Like this? Yeah, it looks so Amazing. good. He looks like an Indian pirate. It's hilarious. With him, you do Olympic weightlifting. We did weightlifting, yeah. Yeah, so that's like. I don't know if you can describe what Olympic weightlifting is to somebody who's not watching. I mean, if like I'm, if you're on the camera, it's this, and then you stand up. Hey, so proud. It, like, yes. Literally in the Olympics, <laughs> or, or yeah, what, what's the other one? Clean and jerk. And then, yeah, something like that. And then the Chinese always win, and then you the lose. Chinese to, always win. You lose to a Chinese person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chinese, are the, Chinese are the Russians. That's the Olympic weightlifting. That's it. That's it. Yeah, always. I don't. He's my only weightlifting player. And, at the uh, minute, yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I w- I'll say this: the gym group. It's a commercial gym, yeah, but it's a very good one because they've got so they've got weightlifting platform, yeah, loads of Olympic barbells. I mean, bumper plates which are okay to drop on the floor. Very, very nice. Yeah, without taking it to a professional degree to any manner, uh, I power lift and yeah. kind of hybrid lift between power lifting, weightlifting when I can, a bit of bodybuilding as well. Yeah. And for most of my training, all I need is a barbell uh, and I do it at a, I train like an elite, just not a, at an elite level, if that makes sense. Of course. So the elites could train there is what I'm of saying. Course. Yeah. Of course. That's, so, I mean, th- that's why you're a coach and not an athlete, isn't mm. it? Because I, like, I can, that's I can why make I'm not sponsored. Anyone out there, put me up. <laughs> <laughs> I can make my own clients stronger than I can make myself. Oh, God, yeah. Literally. Um, One of my clients out benched me the other day, very unhappy. No, that's perfect. You can't out squat me yet, but that's because I do nothing but squats and don't bench ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of on me as well. But no, that's perfect. If you can, Andy Salesbury, how you doing? If you, can, if you can make your own clients stronger than you, that is just perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was there. I was there when you started off personal training. You basically and fitness stuff in general and weightlifting, and you've basically never done anything except this, no, no. and then just carried on every single day. It's true. It's I was there. I started on the twelfth of October, twenty fifteen, and from that I did roughly nine months of working five hours a day, eight hours a day for free until I was qualified, and then I could start getting clients. Following me around. Yeah, following you around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And following other people. Take fun about each other because I'd shine your head and you'd call me out for dreadlocks and this, that, and the other. Yeah, you did that use happened, some dreadlocks. That happened, yeah. I really liked the dreadlocks oh. as well. I really liked One it. One day, maybe. Um, 
But yeah, nine months. That yeah, was, that's commitment. That's hardcore. That's hardcore. That Looking is, back on it. <laughs> no, that is, that is commitment. You decided what you wanted to do in life and then yeah, just absolutely. went after it. Other people, did other people tell you it was a bad idea? Oh my God, everyone, everyone. Really? I, I, I didn't speak to my father for about a year because of a disagreement over that. Over what? Because, because of what you chose to do. Well, okay, so this, as I started doing that, I was my year in school was the first year where it was illegal to not be in education after 16. You had to stay in education until you were 18. Yeah. And I was the only person out of the 200 in my year who somehow skipped that system because I started going to college, didn't really find my groove, and ended up at the gym yeah. and kind of just slipped by the system a little bit. How did you choose that gym? Sorry to interrupt. Because <laughs> I, I know why I chose that gym. So uh, I used to work there too. How did you end up at that gym? Well. Again, you'd have been coming from a much more professional point of view because you were going, looking to go into business straight away. I yeah, went I on, it per, yeah, exactly. on purpose. Yeah. I went on Google, um, researched the top 20 gyms in Sheffield, um, typed up specific letters to all 20 and sent them out as well as a matching and covering email to all of them. I had three responses out of 20. Really? One of them said, we That's like your CV. Me. I know, we like you. Well, 16 year old. Yeah, uh, but if you want to work for free, True thing. I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I got three responses. One said they were interested but didn't have any space. Two invited me for an interview. The first one I went to was the gym. And I mean, maybe then and there it might have been stupid, but I didn't bother going to the other one. No, you shouldn't have. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah. It was perfect. I don't know. It's, um, as, as a personal trainer, the gym group is probably the best company you can work for, in my so opinion. Good. I picked it on purpose. So It's so good. And Leon, the manager at that gym, is also he's great. The, he's the, I mean, I may, maybe coming from a biased point of view because I love the guy and on, in honesty I haven't worked in any other gyms but from seeing how the places are run, what a manager, it, just so good. Yeah, just and how, good how the gym group runs the company where they actually they actually try and do well by and care about oh the God, staff yeah. and the, the deal you get as a personal trainer because you, you're self-employed mm -hmm. and you just run your business from that facility and the agreement between your business and their business is the best you can get in this country. So good, because... So good. No, I, we, we know the personal trainers, they work around Sheffield mm. and there's, there's all of the different commercial gyms and it's, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. It's just not. As it sounds at the minute, exchange 12 hours a week, shift time for uh, keeping 100% profit, profit from what I earn from my business there. Well, I'd never want to get so busy that I didn't have 12 hours in a week to stand around, teach classes and look after members. If I was that busy that I didn't have time for that, really? Do I want to be that busy? No. Just yeah, like, you can pay the rent if you want to anyway, exactly. so you don't have to do that. Um, and as well as that, I need to be standing around doing classes, things like that. That's how I show my face. Yeah, how you get to know people, yeah, exactly. networking a little yeah, bit, exactly. helping people out. Very nice. So how, how is your, I mean, you don't have to go too much into detail, but how is business for you there? Good. Going well. Still running well. Yeah, no, very nice. Um, yeah. Just trickles along. I'm, I'm, I'm very cemented with the clients that I've got. Love you work all. with your clients very closely. Yeah, don't you? Very like, closely. You, you don't have too many clients, but you see them a lot. Yeah, and a you lot. work with them very yeah. intense. And you're messaging them even outside the sessions. Oh, and most days. Yeah, exactly. And re really keeping on top of people. So rather than doing like a... I don't know if it's lower quality, but rather than taking on more people, you you like you prefer to take on less people and be super intense yeah. with that person. Yeah, because I mean, it's not something that, in honesty, it's halfway selfish as much as it is helping them. But because it helps them, I convince myself that it's not selfish, huh? <laughs> which is that it helps me out as well. In that it just gives me a segue into talking about other things other than just training, because I don't just want to be a trainer. Um, I don't like the umbrella statement of being a personal trainer because it's got a bit of a bad rap. It has got a bad reputation. Such a bad reputation. I agree. Which is why I asked you, did people tell you it was a, it was a bad idea? Yeah, of because course. everyone of course. told me doing this and becoming a nutritionist was no a good. bad idea. Yeah, and I don't like that. Um, and still nowadays, whilst it is my, pa my passion and what I love to do and therefore don't consider it work, I would one day maybe like to segue into, I don't know, lifestyle coaching, something more psychological, something more philosophical things it like It is this. psychological it and isn't philosophical which, anyway. Exactly, that's what I'm saying is that without any qualifications, degree or particular knowledge behind me, I do There's like, no degree in philosophy. I don't I mean, know. you can get a degree in philosophy. Yeah. That's not a real Just thing. go back 500 the, years. The, yeah, there's no learn qualification in philosophy. No, no, no. This is that's not why a real I try thing. and talk to people so often so that I can extend and stretch my brain to try and help me in that, those manners. Because like, the people that I can see three times a week, awesome, the people I can see twice a week, do that. But then the ones like Mr. Carpick, I see only uh, once a week. There was a two week period towards the end of last year where I met with him at 7 a.m five days a week for two weeks just to try and get his sleeping on schedule because being- Not getting paid. 
not getting paid, no, respect. No, no. Yeah, which was brutal because it was, I don't do well in the, like I get up and I love training clients in the morning, but I can't train myself I in the morning. I also can't lift well in the morning. I can't and lift well without two meals and two coffees. No, 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 don't even start. <laughs> and when it's weightlifting in the morning, God, chuck, chuck a barbell on your back. Actual Olympic Actual weightlifting. Olympic weightlifting, yeah. seven in the morning, yeah. yeah. But he's recently said, I spoke about him on a, a video that I did on Facebook on last week, Thursday or something. He said it was like the best two weeks he had of like 2018. Yeah. Because not being a practicing doctor, all he does is research, so he's not bound to any nine to five. He can do it when he wants. So it takes a lot to decide to do it in the nine to five, to get up early and do it. He doesn't have to do these things, so he can just do, do it when he wants. Like me, he's a night owl, so considering he has no other obligations to go places and do things day to day, he can just do it whenever he wants. So he finds himself in this habit of getting up at two in the morning, working to eight, sleep until two in the afternoon. So we're like, right, we're gonna fix this. Yeah. The fact that we met at the gym was helpful because it went hand in hand with his positive mindset of getting home at eight o'clock in the morning and being on top of the world. But it was just a handy place to start, to meet, to get him out of bed. And for those two weeks, lost fat, mental attitude went up. I saw his face get happier yeah. and less bags under his eyes. And yeah, he's, he's doing well because of it. Props but, to him, well done perfect. Yeah, I agree, completely well done. And I know you were saying like you want to segue into philosophy and stuff like this. And we were saying just before we turned on the recording that you recently did a video for your page, which was about happiness. And it was about smiling and stuff like this. And it got more interaction and views than anything you've done before. Oh, no, me up. Even on a, I know on a, on a training and fitness page, yeah. some happiness philosophy yeah. got more views than anything else. And I do not think this is surprising at all because nobody, because weightlifting is not the actual goal. Or like, let's say, like, like people, people come to me and they say, I want to lose weight. They, that's what they're saying, but what they mean is I want to be slimmer. What they mean is I want to lose fat. So they, they, so they, they want to see the scale go down, but only as a proxy measure to, be, to getting slimmer. And the only reason they want to be slimmer is to be happier. So the real goal is not even yeah. weight loss or fat loss, it's being happier with who you are. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think it's important. I teach happiness in my course as well. There's, um, well that's why all you're teaching. Really? Again, kind of. you're, you're doing one of the most important means to an end because it covers health as well, which is, is fat loss. Yeah, so, it's all, it's all that together. Is a big driver in being happy is being aesthetically pleasing to whatever you think that is per individual. And mm. fat loss is a big part of that. For everyone. I could be leaner and be happier about it. Every, yeah. I just yeah. like where I am because it fuels my training a lot easier. Try, try being leaner you're not than 150 even on your slightly. What are you even I, talking again, about? Again, what I'm saying though. It's just what you perceive like I know I'm not overweight come on I'm, not I'm doing that thing where I'm talking down your goals aren't I I'm doing that thing where I'm disempowering you towards your goals I'm trying to be nice but I'm saying no no you don't need to be leaner it's called flirting Connor so you doing you flirting with me I'm talking you down a little. I'm not sure if mm, all right <laughs> you can go with that one that look down your nose think, at me sir no no that goes with the I don't know feel of the show right from the start it's true so that's all right yeah chatting up men <clears throat> how you doing <laughs> what, what are you doing after this you want it <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna the sauna after this aren't you I am going to sauna after this. Again, another um, beautiful experience in itself, but very much a stepping stone into just a clearer, happier mind. The, sh the things I do at a sauna, oh my god. i tell you what then, right? Tell me Be what. Because, it's on, because it's on camera and because we're on the recording. Convince me again, because I've still not done it. Yeah, I haven't done it. I know. <laughs> and it, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. I'm too scared. You're a big baby. I've, I've been in the shower when it's only on lukewarm <laughs> and screamed like a, <laughs> it's, like it's, a small child. It is not pleasant in the one minute that you're uh, no, go back, go under back, the cold shower. You're going to have to tell people what's yes, not yes. pleasant for the one minute. So start right at the beginning. After this, you're doing what? Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> so I go up to the McCure Hotel up in town. Anywhere that works with a sauna and a shower that you can put on cold. We do it up at Goodwin Sports Centre sometimes as well. Um, we? You and Mr. Dave me Pearson. Me and Mr. Dave Pearson. Second he's, shout out. I, exactly. He's doing well. We're ranking him up. We'll, we'll get a little tally going. Dave on two. He's winning. <laughs> I think Karthik's on two though. <laughs> it's three now. There we go. Oh no. Oh, go on. Right, uh, we get to the sauna. We have a little swim about in the pool to get us a little bit cold. We don't often have a cold shower first because that is brutal coming from outside into a cold shower. So we just get a little bit chilly in the, um, in the, the pool. Then we go and get in the sauna and sit there for 15 minutes. The first round we just chat shit to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. This is all we do. Uh, and just sit there for 15 minutes in the sauna. Which so you're in the pool first, then you're in the sauna. 15 it's the, it's minutes the main in the sauna. part of it. 15, 15 minutes. minutes in the sauna is, is a decent hard, length of time. Hard, man. It's a decent The max we've done time. is 20. And 
when it gets hard. I'll say, not that I'm trying to be grandiose or big myself up. It's true. Uh, yeah, I can yeah. I can stay in a sauna for quite a while. I can't. You know. That's where I struggle. Steam room, I cannot even enter. <laughs> it's like literally, I just walk into. It's like yeah. walking into a brick wall. I can't even put my face. You really in need it. to settle in a sauna. Like, oh my yeah. god! In the sauna, when I first get in it. I feel like if I breathe through my nose, it's too hot, and if I breathe through my mouth, it's too dry, and then I start to have a panic attack <laughs> and leave. for about, no, for about the first minute, but I'll just, Ooh, pulling this, I'll just meditate and think, it's alright, you're not really going to die, people survive saunas just fine, after about the first two <laughs> or three minutes, I have auto minutes, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> after the first two or three minutes, settle down into it, and then I'm alright, then I can last in a sauna a decent amount of time, yeah man, so you're 15 minutes, yeah, which is hard for me, Dave does that much better than I do, I start like getting weird by the end, I'm like, and you get out of this, what, you're starting to get dizzy? No, 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 nothing physical, it's just, I, I just struggle in heat. Uh, I struggle in heat? I struggle in heat. Are you wearing a turtleneck in the sauna? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be it. Bro, when it catch me when I'm not in a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's cooler for me because I've not got hair. I Maybe. bet it is. It, it, I'll tell you what, that is something that gets me in the shower as well, because it's like putting a mop on your head. And you can't get it dry. Can't get it off. Yeah. But yeah, 50 minutes See, is the just to be bald, you know. You just, I, although I need to shave my head because I'm starting to look like Mr. Burns. Mm, but, um, it's coming. You're streamlined. Yeah. It's, water's coming. I don't have to do yeah. it in the morning. Yeah. No, go on. I'm just, I'm just jealous of the golden water. Carry yeah. on. So, s swimming pool, sauna 15. 15 minutes in the sauna, which in that time we just sit around. Then we just waddle off to a shower. Uh, we bang it on call. It's helpful if you've got a friend because it's a big mental game. Like me and Dave. Just stare each other in the eyes like, who's going to back off this? <laughs> <laughs> just going crazy, like, it becomes one of these, we do about a minute. Have you got clothes on while this is happening? Uh, yeah, yeah, shorts. Right, okay, I'm just... Speedos. No, just speedos. Speedo. No, bro. <laughs> I'm getting these spindly little quads Just check out. it, I'm just trying to get the men make sure I've got the mental picture yeah. of you Dave's staring into another man's eyes in the shower correctly. Yeah, no, no, carry nice. on. Uh, yeah, we get in shower, there's uh, obviously individual showers, may I point out. What, well, cubicles? Yeah, there's so then cubicles. how does it help going with a friend? Because uh, uh, they're the ones we use face each other, you can, you can see each other out of them. How's it a cubicle if you can see you can each keep other? the door open. This is blowing my mind, carry on. <laughs> We're going to have to just move past this. It this makes no sense. Except that you can see each other, okay? And we just get under, to be honest, for, for a bit of it, I close my eyes, but you do a minute under the, the cold shower, which at this time of the year is really cold. So I put it on like really cold for about 30 seconds to keep my head under. And then as soon as I start getting brain freeze, I get my head out, get my chest in, in it, expose my armpits. That's a really good one for getting it to sort of go straight to your torso and really mess you up a bit. And then I go to freezing cold, turn around, get it on my back, stick my head in and out every five seconds for the remainder of the minute. And then me and Dave step out of the shower and then stand there like swaying from side to side. And like the, the number one thing what? that we say every time is we look at each other and we go, whoa, whoa, we go, whoa. And it's the highest I've ever been is just walking out of that shower and just what, standing there. Your endorphins there. are flowing, man, the adrenaline man, probably. I can't describe it. I can't cannot describe so it it's and then the, the best part is yet to follow because then we just go and get in the pool which at McCure is a beautiful dimly lit room with only a, like a meter and a half deep pool so you don't have to think about treading water and I just get in do some breathing exercises to the point that I can uh, blow out and like, what do you mean slowing the breath down yeah ju and just expanding my lungs as well so I can hold my breath for longer then I, I take a deep breath in uh, release about half of it so I can sink to the bottom and sit there on the bottom of the pool uh, and but then I've got nothing, so I can hold my breath for about a minute and a half, two minutes. That's a long time. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and it's I impressive. just sit there, and it is. I wouldn't be able to by a mile the happiest time of my week. Pure meditation. Pure med. It's the purest form. Like Are I those endorphins still flowing from the cold shower when you're in the pool? It's so because you get the physical. Yeah, you get the physical effects of it as well, which for me is like my shins and like all of my erectors on my back. Uh, just kind of like tingle and I, down I, the sides of your spine yeah 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 and I go for I just I engage no muscles obviously in the water that's just floating uh, face up floating I, I, again at this point I'm just sat on the bottom of the pool I just sit there oh you sat on the bottom of the pool yeah Right, sit on the bottom so of the it's pool. jump in the sauna for 15, Yes. blast yourself with the cold shower, as cold as possible, for like two minutes on every a single minute. area of your... Two minutes, one minute. you couldn't do. One, one minute, minute. Yeah. okay, one minute, blast it, this is too much for me already. No, man, you need to do this, I'm going to make you do this. I'd scream and run But well, the thing is, you're thinking about a cold shower now, you're thinking about that cold shower that you tried doing because you heard it on online once when you were a kid, and you did it when you first got up in the morning and all you wanted to do was be warm. Once you've got out of a 15 minute sauna session, you're like, ooh, cold shower doesn't sound like the worst thing ever, and it's not like being out in the snow where your fingers get cold and your extremities and your nose and it's like, <laughs> it's just like, 
your immediate core temperature just drops. So it's a different experience from any cold you've ever had so far, and it's nice. And then going floating in a shower uh, in the um, pool, and if you let your mind run with it, I could be anywhere in space just floating for that. In fact, I've actually ordered a snorkel. You'll, you'll <laughs> laugh at this. I've ordered a snorkel because I wish I could stay down there longer. I wish I could stay on the bottom of the pool for about half an hour. The snorkel only like that long. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is you I'm going to get an I'm gonna take a tube. pipe to it and then put a little uh, rubber float this around the top of it. This is going to be ridiculous. You're going to be like a human look. submarine. Yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. This is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> gonna I'm, so I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm like a cat. I don't like getting wet. I mean, I've got this weird thing. I've had this ever since a child where if, I don't get really in the bath anymore. But I remember being in the bath like maybe a while ago and a lot as a child. I'm jumper off. Yeah, okay. A lot as a child and I'd be in the bath and as soon as my ears, if you say I'd laid down in the water, as soon as my ears would go below the water, I'd instantly feel like I was under the water and I couldn't breathe and start to go into the same panic attack mode. Well, those are all it's facts that you're under the water and you can't breathe. No, I definitely can breathe because my nose and mouth's out of the water. Oh, I've only mean. just laid my head back to my ears under. As soon as the ears go under, <gasps> I literally feel like I don't know, I've not done it for years. But I don't know, I've got some... I can swim, but <laughs> I, can, I just mm, don't like it. I'm not very good at floating. No, but you're quite dense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're in the head, or no? <laughs> no, you're just you're quite lean, so you've got like bones and things that sink. You know what? Something I have figured out is I I do have bones. And that's true. I, I learned this at an, an early age that is when true. I broke a few. <laughs> that is true. So you're doing that today. I uh, am doing that today on my own today. Actually, Dave has clients and yeah. uh, other business matters to attend. You're half and half convincing me, but it just sounds rough. Man, you need to do it. It just sounds rough. It's enjoyable. I took my brother, um, and he, <laughs> I don't want to shout him out, uh, en enjoys the sesh and enjoys feeling <laughs> out of his body a little bit and a little bit wavy, but he walked right. out of that shower the first time he did it, and same deal, he's like, man, all my years, this is the best, weirdest and highest I've ever felt, just coming out of the shower. Uh, this is the man who is respectable on the town for handling himself. I understand. <laughs> yeah. And he walked out and he was like, bro, this has never happened before. I'm cloud nine. I've talked about this for too much. No, I don't think you have. I think it's been on camera now, so I'm going to have to do it. Otherwise, I'm, otherwise I'm just going to look hold like... Hold him to it, people. Don't hold me to it. Hold him to otherwise, it. I'm just going to look like I'm this backing guy. down. Yeah. Aren't I, otherwise? I'm going to let you back down. It sounds terrible. I'm just trying to get you in a swimsuit, really. So, I, that's what I expected. That's why I've been backing <laughs> off. Is he going to be That's why we're asking specific questions about why you're looking into my eyes. Are we wearing clothes? Why, why can't we see each other if it's cubicle showers? This is what... I'm trying to keep it PC. Yeah, <laughs> that's boring. Mm. 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 You need to do it. So anyway, that was the longest introduction of Will Hukin oh, of all time. What time are we on? Half an hour. Half an hour, not we're bad. Doing well, we're doing not well. bad. Um, Turn into a Joe Rogan podcast. You, you originally that would be nice, except with zero views. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is true. That is, and episode one, not episode one thousand two hundred. Yeah, yeah, not one thousand two hundred. Oh, hilarious. Or something. What a guy. We'll get, um, there. We'll get there. You want to talk about goal setting? I do. So what? What? Why did you bring that up? Like we could we could talk about anything. I don't mind what we talk about, and it was going to just be like this open, flowing conversation as it is. And then you thought goal setting is pertinent. <laughs> why? Because everyone needs it. So it's a blanket statement for everyone. So not excluding anyone. <laughs> what? So you're saying if you don't set goals, you won't achieve anything? No, in the. Uh, I mean, everyone that's doing anything has is, has a reason for doing it, and it is most y usually a goal. Um, and the other thing is that most people fail at making goals, which is only an observation of mine. So, apologies if it's so forward, but it, I, I think it's true. What, what do you mean? You said making the goal. Do you mean setting the goal or achieving the goal? All of them. Um, so, because okay, so they fail in choosing the goal because sometimes, and again, I'm coming from a fitness point of view. People are ill-informed. Like, they say, I'm going to lose fat, I'm going to do endless cardio. Okay. The, you see what I mean? They're yeah, using the, the wrong tool, tool for the wrong job. job. There we yeah. go. Coming exactly. at it from the wrong angle. Exactly. So that's the, f the first mistake, is they come from an uneducated low. point of view. Yeah. Which, Which is I don't hard to say without sounding insulting, but obviously it would be the exact same for me if I was going into freaking... To get your car fixed. Yeah, the, you know what I mean? the mechanic was doing yeah. over, and you would have no idea... What I was doing. Exactly. So it's... No, everyone's yeah. informed on something. Can I just speak on that point for a Please do. Because I think... It's, I, I've, I've spoke about this on my page because I don't blame people. I blame other trainers and other fat loss so programs much. being goddamn awful. Because 
people who come to join my fat loss program, they've usually done, in their words, everything before. Yeah, and let me guess, they know nothing. They've got, and they, or oh, they know everything about the wrong thing. Yeah, and yeah. they join my program, and I blow their minds with education. With the basic I'm, facts. I'm thinking, how is this possible? Yes. You've been to Slimming World 59 times. You've been to Weight <laughs> Watchers. You've bought every freaking cookbook in the world. You, Joe been, Wicks, shout out. Yeah, you, you've been to the GP. You've been to see dietitians, most likely, at the, at the actual hospital and stuff like this. And then, the professionals, alleged. And I, I just don't, this, how can this be people's yeah, fault? Agreed. They've been to see so many professionals and they've still ended up with nothing. I think, what have these people been doing? Mm. So I don't blame people for being uneducated. And to be fair, it is a complex thing and people have got their own lives and yeah, absolutely. You, can't, you can't know everything about everything. Which is why it's helpful to, I mean, outsourcing to you is such a uh, good idea because again, for the people that uh, you're working with, they get such a cheap price for what you're giving them. Uh, it's thirty-six pounds per month. Exactly. You no know, cocktails like nine pounds for one now. Yeah. Are you? And that's serious? going against everything that someone's trying to achieve. Are you serious? You know what I mean? So yes. they don't even have to learn anything. They just need to outsource thirty-six pounds a month. That's maybe what three hours work to some people in a month, yeah. and they've covered their expenses for this encyclopedia that is Connor Rhodes, the source of all knowledge. Well, the source of most the nutritional source of some knowledge. knowledge. <laughs> That's more like it. Let's uh, keep it accurate. Yes. <laughs> the source of some knowledge, for sure. Some nutritional knowledge. Yes. I only have one skill in life. Because, the like we are saying, the, wor the world's very niche. Yeah. I, I literally can only talk about nutrition. I can't even really write that well about nutrition. You've, you've put about 500 videos up on Facebook. What have they all been about? All of them calories. Calories. All Every calories. Everything I'm on. One. Calories. Even this one. Hey, how are we doing? Calories. calories. I only have one. I can't even really use a screwdriver. That's not an exaggeration. See, that's why I differ. I like the handyman side of things. I only look manly on the external. So it's, it's a complete masquerade and yeah. charade. Yeah. I've gotten the tattoos and shaved my own head, Ooh. just like on purpose, Ooh. To, try <laughs> to, tr to try and appear yeah. masculine. Yeah. But on the inside, it's just textbooks all the way down. I just own a lot of facts. Yeah, man, that's the best way to be. In my brain. It's the best way to be. Nerds rule the world. It's true, nerds don't, don't you rule know. the world. What were we saying before I rudely interrupted? You said people are uneducated. Yes, which uh, leads them to their first mistake, which is they just pick the wrong tool for the job. Yeah. Um, and then they, they're too hard on themselves, which a lot of, again, relating back to, tr to fitness, a lot of trainers tell people so, to be hard on themselves. Just because we went off tangent, so we're talking about goal setting and you're saying people, people set the goal in the wrong area to start with. Yeah. Is that the first mistake? Yeah. Pe yeah, pe people are not setting the goal. Like, what's the most common one when people walk into the gym that we correct them on? I want to lose weight. No, you don't. Yeah, you, you want, want to lose, lose body fat. Exactly, like, like we said that's the early. first thing. Okay. They, so the first thing they're saying is often wrong. Yeah, and again, that, again that's not people's fault. That's because everybody fault. around them and yeah. everybody at Slimming World and Weight Watchers and all these places, because they're the most famous places, they say, come to us, lose weight, mm -hmm. don't they? So then people say, I want to lose weight, but in reality, no. They, and then when people, then people start getting confused in the weight loss and the fat loss process, yeah. because I'm trying to explain to people how <coughs> fat loss works, like you lose fat directly proportional to the amount of calories that you do not eat, yes. basically. And, but your weight doesn't have to go down proportionally. So I'm like, look, trying to explain to people, fat loss is this thing, weight loss is this thing. Fat loss is only calories. Weight loss can be you've lost a leg, you, you're dehydrated, you've been to the toilet, you've exercised and burnt off some carbohydrates, you've got real sweaty, you've not eaten, so you've got no, I don't know, you're ill, so you've been sick, now you're lighter. This is all weight loss, this is fat loss, and they have different names because they're different things, they're not, but people use them as synonyms. So yeah, people using, That's true. People so using true. wrong tool for the wrong job, getting the wrong idea, yeah. coming at it from the wrong perspective. Which leads to the wrong approach. Which leads to them, in my opinion, putting in tons of effort into the wrong place. So you, you're going really fast to the rock, you're climbing a ladder really fast to find out you're going on the wrong wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I you, like that. You, you, good. You're just blasting down the road, but you've not even set the GPS correctly. So you've set off driving real fast on your journey mm. without even understanding whether you're going in the right direction first. So anyway, <coughs> no, you're true. I understand what you. I yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's and it sounds precedent for most people. Again. I'm ignorant on everything except fitness, so I'm talking strictly about fitness. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know anything about anything else. Um, Maybe a bit about philosophy. I like to think Maybe so. a bit about putting highlights in. You know something mm, about I do that myself. You know something about getting jacked. Not on the arms, I don't. 
Not on the arm. Not on the arms of it. Neither, How's that? Neither That's do neither. I. Not no. bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Try said to eat something. Not bad. Not good at all. <laughs> um, and where are we after this? Incorrect goal setting. What, what did I write down? There's a little there. Uh, oh yeah. Um, a bit more notes, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, three. That is, that's prepared, I like that. No, that's a good idea. Which consists of six words. <laughs> that's perfect, little bullet point reminders exactly. to bring you back. Actionable goals uh, is yeah. things that people don't make. They, they put, give correct. themselves goals because they've heard other people say them. Mm. They hear, St what's his name, Steve Cook say them on Instagram. That'll work for Steve Cook. That may not work Steve for Cook's you. Steve Cook's who? A famous fitness model. I think so. Super jacked, super like, jacked. super lean super guy. Super jacked, seems like a nice abs. enough guy. Yeah. He's got like veins on his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's got abs on his eyebrows. Yes. Yeah, Ooh, go on. Good looking guy. Look at you again. <laughs> <laughs> you said good looking guy. I know, I didn't know. And then I imagined you. what it would look like to put abs on your eyebrows and that would be ridiculous and not a good looking guy. Ooh, hilarious. Abs like my pets. Yeah. So Steve Cook's on Instagram saying I don't know. That. And people What's pick, he saying? Here's an example, but people pick goals based on things other people have said. Okay, like what? Like, they want to lift a certain amount, they want to train six days a week. Steve Cook's been training for what, a decade? Okay. Six days a week? Probably longer. It's going to be nothing for him. Okay. I've been training consistently for three years now and I train six times a week and I'm fine with it. Yeah. It, you know, if, if you're coming into the gym for the first time and you say to yourself, I'm going to train, I don't know, if you say three times a week and then I ask you, what's the likelihood of that out of 1 to 10 and you say anything 7 or less that the likelihood is you're going to train lower that number and the reason why you lower that number is because it's fine to lower that number I've got uh, a, a, most, a, a, a good couple of female clients and male clients on two sessions a week that have had phenomenal results considering now that fat loss is taken care of outside of the gym continuously and always Just so long as you're being smart exactly okay. and their strength goals um, be that with an individual movement like a bench press, a pull up, a squat, a push up, whatever it may be, or their aesthetic goals, have a bigger chest, have a nicer bum, better quads, bigger shoulders, whatever, that gets taken care, care of inside of the gym yeah. and can be done on two sessions a week, then you just have to be smart about how you train. So don't tell yourself you're going to come in six times a week if the likelihood of you doing that is not good because if we were robots and we just failed at doing that, that's fine, we just pick ourselves up and go again the next week. But we have emotive responses to things, so when we fail, we don't pick ourselves up and go again. We just get sad and don't do anything. Mm. And then we... So it's a negative feedback yeah. loop on what you just tried to do. Yes, and the, the, I spoke <coughs> on my video on Thursday about the snowball effect, which I'm a big advocate of. And again, in the things just snowball, uh, and because it, in my opinion, will happen of whatever you're doing. If you, what's the, how does the saying go? I said it in that video as well. If you plant uh, weeds in a garden, weeds will grow. And if you plant roses, roses will grow. <laughs> and just in life, either way, this snowball effect will take over in that if you do something wrong, if you get up hella late in the morning because you, you've got a day off work, you feel sluggish. And what's the last thing you're going to do? Is going to go to the gym. You're going to sit in front of the telly and watch TV. Well, you're already running late, so you're a little bit stressed, so, so maybe you don't eat breakfast properly. Yourself, so yeah, you, you turn can... up at work, but you only just make it, yeah, so you're yeah. thinking, shit, I've not eaten. And then, because even though it's your own fault, because you get to lunchtime and you're upset because you've had a bad day, you go and eat crap. You Because you yeah. feel like you've... Because you've got this feeling of sadness, you feel like you have earned, or you could be easy on yourself, because even though it's self-inflicted, you feel sad. Mm. Does this make sense? It does. The analogy I use is it's like a train. Um, I say, choo -choo. Yeah, I say motivation and momentum compounds, but it works like a train in the way where it's really hard to set a train off and it <laughs> feels really heavy and it's like chug, chug. <laughs> try to say, try to, Do we have that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> Trying to set off the train, it's really difficult, isn't yeah, it? And yeah, then yeah. the faster it goes and you b build momentum going down the track faster and faster and faster and faster and then once it's going, you try and stop that train. Good Nothing luck. will stop that Good train. Luck. You can jump in front of that train and it will blast Slide you down. Exactly. If you want to stop that train, you've got to ram the brake on it. Mm. Scratch, screech to an awful slow stop. And then you've got to power it into reverse and then slowly chugga, chugga, chugga. reverse, chug it back the other direction. It's not going to go well, is it's it? It's going to take freaking ages. Ages, so long. Isn't it? So once, once you've started moving yeah. towards your goals, it's easier to continue. But if you start moving the wrong way, the wrong way, the it wrong will way, happen either way. Start once you start moving in one down. direction, it will happen. So make that direction something you want to do. So don't set yourself up for failure by saying to yourself, yeah, six days a week, I'll do that. 
No, you won't. Right, so you're saying set realistic goals. Set basically. things that, set realistic that you goals. can best adhere to because the, the second best thing over the, say, frequency in a week for weight training is just the consistency over time. Um, what we are now, fifth shout out, Emily, my client, <laughs> uh, got her first push up towards the end of last year because we trained to do push ups uh, very monotonously, very continuously on a Monday and a Friday for about three, maybe three, three months, I think. Uh, just two days a week for the sessions themselves lasted an hour, so two hours a week she was training. Not a lot. The push ups themselves that is not a lot of time. lasted 10 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes a week. a week. Three months later she could do press ups. Three months later she could do that press ups. She wanted to do a push up for about 25 years <laughs> before this. It took her three months to get there. It took 20 minutes. I believe I love you. It yeah. took 20 minutes for 12 weeks. Yeah. And that is pure consistency. And it's just consistency and frequency. But I bet it's not. I bet there's a little bit more to that that you're missing out because, like, you, because you'll have there's set her. There's the accountability her, of me being there. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have set her realistic goals. So you won't have said, right, day one, try a press up. <laughs> you'll have said, day one, we're doing knee press ups. And so you'll have, you'll have got her on her knees or, I don't know, what would be an easy progression that you would use for a Regression. Beginning? Sorry? Regression. Regression, yeah. yeah, correct word. We do What the, would be an easier version for somebody who can't do a press up, what would you give them? We elevated their hands oh, on the boxes. Oh, you do I've do seen that. Do that. I've seen you do that. And then it becomes yes. very tangible, because this is exactly how I would have done it with weight training, in that with, with weights you have numbers, you have weights. I just use heights. Are you looking for something to do a push up on? I was just wondering <laughs> if you could just put your legs down there and do one, and then I realise you're attached to that thing. I'm it's attached probably to not a good things. idea. No, let's not do that. Let's just leave it. But you, imagine doing a press up like sort of on an angle. Think kitchen table. Hands on the kitchen table, feet on the floor. Yeah, push or on up. kitchen side. Do That's that. A good idea. Then try doing one on the floor. Mm -mm. Yeah, Harder. so you start someone off on high, yeah. going, and then you'd move it lower and, and lower. And the way we literally did it, because it's so, so. <laughs> see, this is the thing in that with musculature and the results that you'll, cut, you'll have and see from weight training. One, it's freaking slow because you make, well, I mean, when you weight train, you micro tear your muscles, which what means you, mean you building have- you muscles slow or yeah. your strength slow? Both. 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 Yeah, good. Both. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. We're breaking Steady things. Steady on. <laughs> All right. So when you break down a muscle, you create micro tears. This yeah. um, creates micro gains. <laughs> micro muscle. Yeah, it does. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah. Yeah, micro you know what I mean? muscle. We, you've been training 10 years. I've been training three years. I oh. look. Tiny. No, you don't. No, you do not. <laughs> well, you see what I'm saying, though. In that, you're not going to see week by week these re re um, results. You're not going to see your arms like. No, especially because you look at yourself every day in the mirror. You'll be the last person, which is very annoying, to see your results. I saw Emily twice a week, so I, every bit I'm like, every couple of weeks I'm like, hey, she's looking better. She's yeah, that makes doing sense. better. Same yeah. with all my clients, yeah. especially if they're fat loss clients as well, which uh, Emily isn't particularly. But I've had other clients in the past who bit by bit I've seen them come in their face looks a little bit better, a little yeah, bit yeah. tighter, this, that and the other, but they don't see it nearly as much. Mm. Um, but yeah, essentially it takes a while, whereas if you can put numbers on things, you can so, so tangibly know if you're getting better, which is a great tool for sustainability because people get jump off the wagon because they don't think they're getting better because they can't see it. Because they're not tracking it. Exactly, because what we did with Emily uh, and what I would do with anyone, so to, to use this example, we had her on a red box. The first time she, she did it, she got six push-ups on there. Uh, the then, red box is a high one. Yeah, yeah, very high one. Uh, she got six, then on the second set. It's the equivalent of like doing it on your kitchen side or something. Yeah. yeah. Th then we turned it over and she had to make it higher still. She got like 11 and then she got like 10. So then we have heights written down and numbers correlating to them. Then the next time she comes in, she tries and gets seven, 12, 10. She, I think she did get that on the, on the second what, what, time. And that's, so she did slightly more repetitions so she's on, getting the, on the same... On the exact same thing. So she's literally just climbing this ladder. Doing the same exercise, but one more repetition. Every time. And it's easy to get this in your head. Like if you get it, you'll be over the moon because you know so, so tangibly that mm. you have improved, which is nice. If you got six on Monday and you get seven mm. on Friday, you've improved. If you get eight on that Monday still, in a week you've added two reps. And you're only expecting her basically to add one more if she can or something Yeah, which like again is, is still just a term, a, a number that I've plucked out of the ether because it's the lowest I can do, one. It's still a certain <laughs> yeah. degree. So if she don't get it, it doesn't mean she hasn't got particularly stronger. It means she hasn't got one stronger. Yeah, so there's if, you still can a only, if you can only do one, if you want to do another one, that's, that's, a, that's 100 smallest, more. That's the smallest increment I can make. Yeah. So I have to put it somewhere. But you know, if you, I mean, if you could, if you could only do one press up, yeah. you, uh, and next time you want to do two, you have to be double as strong. Exactly. So if you only got quarter stronger, exactly. you still wouldn't make it. And you think you've done crap, but really you're just using not the correct but variables really, to measure really, it. You just can't. You you just can't quite make the next level up, as it were. You'd be closer for sure. 
um, but you can't so you climb try the more. next increment. So it just comes back to that consistency. So it's just consistency because so there's days in my training when I, today I did quite well. This was my, I think, third attempt at getting 82 on bench for three sets of eight. And today I got it. Twice yeah. before this, I failed it. Good. And before that, I uh, had it on 80. The session before that, I failed 80. The session before that, I had it on 77. The session before that, I failed at 77. And it's just, you know, give and take. But you just always keep coming back. And when, you know, I started this program that I was on now at the start of this year, getting 75, I think, for three sets of eight. Today, I got 82 for three sets of eight. I look no bigger. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> did, I'm smaller. Or if you did, you wouldn't be able to notice. I wouldn't be able you just to see yourself every day. Exactly. Which Whereas I can look at this and go, oh shit, look at that. That was 75. Yeah. Now I'm on 82. I know for a fact I'm stronger. Yeah. This is this keeps me in the game mentally. So, so even if your goal was to get bigger, you're tracking the variable, which is to get stronger. Yeah. As if your goal was weight loss, you you don't necessarily have to track the weight loss you track the calorie intake which causes the exactly. weight loss. so you're tracking the thing that causes the result that you want exactly. rather than the thing you actually want yeah. which is why the first thing you said if we loop right back around to the beginning was set actionable goals rather than I suppose it'd be an outcome goal exactly this is one of the things I have in my program I, I, I call it process goals yeah you call it actionable yeah. goals same yeah. thing so ra again rather than saying I will go to the gym more Put some numbers on yeah, that, that shit. Makes no sense, I will go to the how gym tomorrow at seven in the morning. Yeah. If it gets to seven thirty and you're not there, you're gonna kick yourself in the teeth. I'll give, I'll give you a specific example. Um, every single Sunday, every member of my Six Steps to Slim program is required to post their goals for the week coming ahead to me. So on a Sunday night, they post their goals to me. I check that it's That's correct, nice. and then when they wake up on Monday morning, they've got their plan set. Good. Just just like you, I only let them set goals that they know they can achieve, and I don't do seven out of ten. It's nine out of ten. There you go. They have to write down. Uh, this is what they they have to write down exactly this. I am ninety percent confident that over the next week I will call on and then whatever they want. And it has to be a process goal, not an outcome goal. No, so yeah. it cannot be. I, I am ninety percent confident that over the next week I will lose two pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not confident that's going to happen. Yeah. Because you've not told me you're going to freaking do anything. No. So what are you going to do? Wish it away? And it's nice. How are, gonna, how are we going to get rid of that? It's nice to reverse engineer these things, which is easier potentially in your field than it is mine, because there's more variables with strength gaining than there is with mm. fat loss, in that yours is just an input and an output of two freaking numbers. Mm. So you can reverse engineer it. And again, if we were robots, you just yeah, mathematically you find robots, out how much yeah. a robot would burn in a day, give him 200 well. calories less, and watch him lose like. A pound or just under in a week. That'd be terrible coaching to expect that. Because exactly, like said, people we're are not robots. robots. I know we're not robots. If people that's understand. The, don't be harsh on yourself. That's the equivalent. Don't treat yourself like you are. If you were a terrible personal trainer, yes. Call out to personal trainers that do this. Um, you would create, for example, a plan of a six-week progression of my client will bench oh God. seven reps on this day. Then we're going to increase by, it'll be eight reps on that day, nine reps on that day, then we'll change. And you'd make like an eight week like strength training program and expect that person to follow that through perfectly. Where on really day three, they're like, my elbow hurts and I'm tired. I don't really want to do that. And then you're just not doing it. Yeah. And it's out. Burn the plan. You have to accommodate people a not person. Freaking robots, yeah, you have they? to accommodate a plan to a person, not a person to a freaking plan. Oh, that's a nice way of saying it. That's yeah. a nice way of saying you, it. You don't oh. try and change someone that's spent 30 years walking around as themselves to fit your freaking plan that you devised five minutes at home that before the session started because you're a shit personal trainer. Mm. You know, mm. figure out what that person is and then fit a plan to them because they ain't going to change. They've been walking around on the same two feet for 30 years. Jesus. Well, it's, it's like I'm going to steal Jordan. You know Jordan Peterson? By name. Uh, I think famous is. psychologist. I'm okay. going to steal what he says. He talks about like, you know, yin and yang. Yeah. Like the Chinese dark and light yeah, good yeah, and yeah. evil he calls it order and chaos okay and he says there's I'm stealing a tea, yeah. yeah yeah blast some tea for sure it's gone it's gone cold we're blasting uh, it we're not just it's got it. it's got four sweet well, you've got a nice little shiny thing i'm coming at it. you from heaven oh it looks like i'm like coming it. at you from it heaven i'll tell you what i'll do i'm gonna we Still should on we it. should probably think about wrapping this up soon it's we're, true we're at nearly an hour but we'll continue and i'll just sorry everyone for the the time we've not if people don't like it, they'd have turned off already. It's if you've true. Got, if you've got, if you've got <laughs> yeah, them, now. They, look at that. It looks beautiful. Yeah. If, you, if you've, I should have sat, I should have sat here like this anyway. This is yeah, like yeah, a better true. position. If you, um, if if they've got this far into it, they must like what we're saying anyway. Otherwise, you can turn it off at any time. Oh, I forgot about the sweetener. Oh, yes. that's so vile. Are you serious, bro? That's no good. Are you serious? Oh, that's that is awful. real good. That is a real tea. There's only four sweeteners in the entire thing, so that's like not even two per cup. How do you do this? Beautifully. That's how I do it. No on good. purpose and with vigour. 
Come this on. Guy. Um, this guy. I was anyway. I was talking to you about what the way we set goals. So we, we make people set 90% confident goals. Mm. And like I said, they, they have to be a process goal, not an outcome goal. So my job basically, every single Sunday, but a large proportion of my job on my Fat Loss program is correcting people's goal setting. Even though I teach them how to goal set and it tells, it shows them how to do it in the program and I go through it with them, people still slowly, str and it's not an easy thing to do. We're technically professional goal setters. Like I've, I've literally studied habit change yeah. science and self-determination theory and the psychology of change and all this stuff to help people do this properly. So it's, it is a difficult and specific thing to do. Um, but it has to be a process goal rather than an outcome goal. So they're not allowed to set down, I will lose two pound next week because this doesn't help. No. It has to be, I will do X, this. Y and Z. Yeah, and not, not like you said, not I will walk more because a common thing we get people to do is step counting to burn calories. Wow. Not I will do more steps, because this tells me nothing. No. How many steps did you do? When are we doing them? And how many more is more? If it's one more, then it's like, Good well, job. that's still more. You've achieved the goal, but let's be real. It's, so, how, so it has to be specific goals, like you said, achievable goals, yeah. realistic goals. Things that you can act actionable on. Actionable goals, actionable. yeah. What else on goal setting? Um, just to cover that, what you were saying there with an, with an exact example. Uh, seventh shout out. <laughs> Good. Mr. Miss Shauna, um, another client of mine. She's Good. doing really well. Um, we were talking the other day about, I think again, so she kind of made, what were you calling it? An outcome goal. Mm -hmm. um, by the end, to, to lose a kilo a week. And I was like, possible, really yeah. hard. Because, and then we reverse engineered this and, and figured she'd, out. Well, she'd have to be minus 770 calories per day. Mm. Yeah, so I was telling her exactly what she'd have to be burning less a day. But no, I'm lying, she'd have to be minus 1,000. 1,100. Yeah. 1, what did I just. 7,000. I was about to call you out. Well, it's, then. 700, it's minus 770, isn't it? And then yeah. you're right. Yeah. I got it wrong. Yeah. Continue. One, yeah, 1,100 a day. Uh, yeah. Deficit, oh my which God. I'm like... That's intense. I'm like, you're a five foot six female? You want to be eating 900 calories a day? You're telling me that? You're saying her no. le level of calorie intake to keep her the same would be about 2,000. That's what it has been. Her Fitbit sort of been showing. Mm. Um, so I'm like, you, you want to eat that? From here, you have options. 900 calories a day? Yeah. Good freaking I'm like, here you, for, from here, you have options. If you do want Look how to... bright that is. It's so cute, isn't it? Go on, here you have options. From here you have options. You can lose um, one kilo a week if you wish and then you can decide how you're going to do this. If you're an animal, uh, a machine, more like a robot and you can function on 900, 900 calories a day, it's not something no I'll can. recommend but I will support if you freaking decide that for some reason, then yeah, cool, it's you're going to be need to be burning. Yeah, it's not dangerous, no, it's, it's not fine. Dangerous. You're going to be need to be burning 2,000 calories. If you still want to lose that but you want to eat more, if you want to eat 1,500 calories a day, that's going to be a much easier time to eat that guess how many calories you burn in 2600 now you've just got to do some more steps in the day Ooh. and it, you know what I mean but it's like do you want to um, walk 2600 calories uh, do you want to walk that off in a day no do you want to eat 900 in a day no right so change your goal make it more realistic, make it more realistic. Make it if you more want to realistic. lose a pound a week maybe you're going to be able to um, eat uh, 1500 and only burn 2000 and lose that pound in a week Boom. That adds up, adds up more or less, right? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I don't, don't ask me about maths. I just screwed it up on camera. <laughs> I just said completely the wrong freaking thing on camera and just got the numbers totally wrong. You got uh, corrected by an actual child. No, that's good. I shouldn't have said that. I've like myself I told right you, now. the students become the master. This is why you're good. Is support, this it? support me yeah. on the way. And um, yeah, I can tell that you're a rookie just by the amount of freaking sweeteners in this tea. This is, this is that is amazing. Artificial sweeteners have shown zero side effects for any humans in history. You tried being naturally effect. sweet. I really do try, but it's difficult. The oh, weight of the world weighs it. down upon me. Man, so occasionally you and Atlas, just, huh? <laughs> I, I've, I've got like honey flavored shower gel, so that I'm like, ah, oh, in the morning trying to just <laughs> what for all your hair? Before, yeah. All right, question: <laughs> shampoo or soap for you? This is a. This has got to be a decision. <laughs> what do you mean? Where? Yes, shampoo or soap. On the head. On anywhere. Shampoo. Really? But I've got a real question for you, and this is an actual thing I've been wondering. Mm. I've got chest hair, mm. shampoo, mm. or shower gel. Mm. What are we saying? Mm. It's like, how long does it... Not that I've got ridiculous... I don't know, chest because hair, I have also have, have one chest hair. A singular. Um, yeah, this is the one. Really long though, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Tucked into my belly button. Oh, that's awful. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you need to get rid of that. Oh, I don't. Get rid of that. 
<laughs> no, we're not that bad. We're not it that comes bad. Comes and it just starts tickling you. Yeah, don't, don't. No, no. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I, I can tie it back with the rest of me. You think it's your girlfriend? It's your own belly button hair uh. tickling you on the neck. No good. You're having nice dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this needs to end. This is hilarious. Uh, no, I use shampoo on the skull. Okay, on the skull. Why are you asking me about? Chess hair beauty products. It's just something I've been thinking you about. Say it like I know things about how it's to look good. It's something I've been thinking about. It's just, I don't know. It's these problems that you never think to, you never think these things are going to come up as you age, and then the problems that you encounter are just completely unexpected, and you've just got to you adjust, know, haven't you? Tax it's like goal and shampoo or body wash. It's like goal setting again, isn't it? You've just got to adjust your goals. <laughs> if, one day, if one day. <laughs> One day I get so hairy for some reason that I have to switch to full body shampoo, and that's that's gonna have to be a sign, oh isn't it? That'd God. be that'd be a real freaking issue. werewolf, Connor. No, that's not real. Is it? No, you're alright. Um, what else about goal setting? So we've we've not we've not gone through boom 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 what the actual things are, but you've said set realistic goals, set actionable goals. Um, what else? Remind me. Realistic, it's actionable, process, yeah, sustainable, sustainable goals. And um, just achievable and don't be too hard on yourself. I'm going to say that's that, basically the game. Yeah, the blanket statement is just sustainability because I mean, if again, if this applies to both, say, fat loss or strength progression, whatever it is. If you're doing something twice a week, uh, or you're burning only half a pound a week, something quite easily done, um, but you do it for a year, you're doing far better than the guy that's gone. You're doing better than everyone, basically. One kilo a week for two weeks. And then get it back. And then gone, nah, this is a bad that idea. That is true. Yeah. That's why like slow and steady wins the race. The hair and the tortoise sort of thing. This is why, for muscle building and strength building, you've got no choice. It's slow whether you like it or not. It is a, it is a used to slow it. process. Yeah. 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 With fat loss, you do kind of have a choice because it can be fast. Like, people in my program <laughs> lose up to a stone per week, but sometimes that's not, not, not a stone a week, a stone a month. And some, <laughs> yeah. I know that would be ridiculous. I didn't even pick up on that when you said it. Yeah. No, I didn't until no. about a second later. I thought, oh my, that's not correct. No, that would be good. I'm doing all and again, with the numbers. That's also today. individual in that that's going to be the person who already weighs 30 stone. Sometimes not the person it, that weighs 9. It depends how hard people work yeah. as well. Um, this tea. Um, one thing I do with all my clients, again, once we've had the calorie in, calorie out talk, and we've coached them on that, assuming that they have some form of fat loss goals, and they're plodding along nicely with that, mm. is that we then obviously have to decide how they're training in the gym. And because this is done with me, it's very simple to do. And most, I'd say about 75% of my clients do all of their training in the gym with me. Again, because I see people twice or three times a week, this makes it easier. Um, but also because that's, for most of them, they're new to the gym. The goals that they have, even if they're aesthetic, I make them strength goals because that's the best way to monitor these goals and even attain them. Because you can be strong in a rep range of one to three or from eight to twelve. You you know you don't have to be strong in everyone's version of strong in that you're lifting heavy things. You can be strong with light weight, which is more um, applicable to hypertrophy and muscle growth. So it can relate back to aesthetics and growing muscle. Um, but it's just something again you can you can focus on much more and you only need to do it twice a week so what I get people to do is one of two things if they come into the gym knowing that they want to get better at something like my client Matthew 7th 8th shout out did super super well oh my god he started you'll know this by reference at about 74 kilos on the um, pull up weighted pull up machine really low down so really easy so that's how much it's helping him that's up. how much it's helping so, him so he's helping him it's helping him quite a yeah. lot basically and he can do lift himself he up. could do six reps on that okay. fast forward six months he can do ten full reps body weight Boom. fast forward how long six months that's impossible mm -mm, it's because he lost 14 kilos in the process because his fat so loss is taking away so he's good Matthew the man that's look not forward to seeing you next month that is so freaking so good. Say, say again. So, so he, he went from massive assist and then six months massive later assist he can do for ten. six reps and now he can doing do ten, ten, on his own. ten on his own now. He's not he's not far off adding um, weight to his pull ups. But so what he did, so he walked in knowing he wants to do pull ups, so immediately prescribed pull ups. Yeah? Um, if people walk in like and they consistency, every workout we're doing pull ups and yeah, and what we do and what else? What we do is I, I will just give that some complementary exercise. So for him it was pull ups and push ups, and similar. I did the exact yeah. same thing with him that I did with Emily. In that we just started on a high box, worked him down to the floor. Now he could just do twenty push ups in his sleep and not even worry about it. And after he could do about ten, we just switched it onto pull ups and bench. Yeah, because again similar thing, but he's got more of a weight control there with bench. Yeah, um, and yeah, so for the 
for the bench for the push up one with him, he wasn't as fussed about doing push ups as he was doing pull ups. So we reverse engineered from the fact that he wanted a bigger chest and bigger triceps and prescribed push ups to that exercise. Same with Emily. Um, she came in saying, I want to be able to do a push up and I want to have a nicer bum, which in her world was bigger. So she got prescribed um, push ups and hip thrusts, which is what we would start every session with, just supersetted. Yeah, yeah. Entirely retarded superset in that they're in no way correlated. Other than Sounds the fact like that they work, both though. are correlated towards her goals. So we'd just come in, they're the only things we would absolutely monitor is if she was a professional weightlifter, to see her progression climbing up every week. We'd kill her at the start of the session mm. on push-ups and push-ups. And then we'd go and bodybuild for the rest of it. We'd superset walking lunges and leg curls. Superset means do exercises. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then and more of a quad exercise maybe. And then by then she's covered more or less all her lower body. And then, so she'd done what? Push-ups for her upper body. Then, so then we'd throw in a, uh, a horizontal pull, seated row, superset that with shoulder press. Then that's your vertical push, bang, pull-ups in at the end. And she's so done full body. everything nice and well round. She's done full body yeah, so in one hour. She does that again on a Friday and she's covered her entire body twice, twice in a week, week, which is all I tell people to do anyway. In two hours. Exactly. How, how you do that, I do not care. If you want to split that up into doing arms on one day, chest on the next, shoulders on the other, do it, but then you're in six you days a week. You still need to get improved in exactly. twice Exactly. You're in six days a week and you've got no social life. Yeah, that's pretty Which much is fine if you want to do that, because that's what I do. That's that's what I do. As well. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do, except again, I've been training so consistently now. For 2018, I squatted three times a, a week, every week. So now I squat four times a week. This is nothing for me because just because of the consistency, the tolerance, and but the. You didn't start that way. No, because my tendons would have blown up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started on. And you had, you had a little bit of a back problem. Yeah, I did before that. Yeah. So you started off light with just the bar. Yeah. And and now I can squat 150. And when which people is twice as much as you weigh. That's twice as much as I weigh. 2018 January, I could squat 100 kilos for one. 2018, 23rd of December, I, I squatted 150 for one. People ask me, oh my God, how did you do that? Guess what? I squatted and I did it three times, three a, week times a week and didn't stop for a year. Yeah. This, this is it. This is just consistency and frequency and progressive overload. The only things you need, um, I'll say that you need enough variation in a week to cover everything, which is those one hour sessions I have with my clients where we cover full body. Uh, but you need enough fre frequency. Uh, yeah, you also need variation per session to cover everything. Frequency per week to make sure you've covered everything twice if you're, if you're new to the gym. Why are you saying twice? Just because it's a very standard, uh, achievable, maintainable, um, okay, optimal. Okay, so it's not too many. Optimal, yeah. Why is once not good enough? Because the frequent, because you've you'll recovered before you come back to, you'll recovered by halfway through the week, and then you'll have just wasted three, four days until you could have done it again. So yeah, you could I do it once a week, yeah, but and whilst you're not particularly going to regress from that Friday to Monday where you didn't train if you trained on the Monday before, yeah. you're not going to progress. And yeah. you've definitely got time to go to the gym twice a week. I don't care who you are. That is true. I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing on some people on the podcast, like uh, Paul Walker. Um, he has. Is that your client? That I was just training yeah, with him yeah, before yeah. the show. Yeah. I only know him as Paul. Yeah. I have three. He has three businesses, two children, a wife. He goes to bed at eight thirty every night. <laughs> Owns Sheffield Tiber, so he's got three businesses. Owns, owns a Sheffield rugby Tiber's rugby club as well as yeah. the chairman. Has two children, a wife. Goes on date nights, like goes out for a couple of beers with his Standard friends. Standard family guy. Manages to train like four times. I see him in there four times a week. Yeah, four times a week doing his training. I'm bringing him on. I'm like, you're a savage. Yeah. Let people know how. Yeah. If Let you have a nine to five how. job, I'm sorry, but by definition, you are in a part time job because if you sleep eight hours a day, you work eight hours a day, you've got eight hours left. That's half. You work yeah, at fifty percent so max. There's quite. There's Don't quite work sixteen hours a day. You'll die. But yeah, that I'm just giving, telling you the that realistic, you know, mathematics of it. If you work nine to five, that is it. What are you doing from six till seven in the morning? Well, there's 176 sleeping. hours in a week. So if you spend forty at work, and you're sleeping for another forty, I'm, I'm de I dare even say any more numbers on the on the show before I get it wrong. Uh, What's 176 minus forty? 136. Uh, yeah. Minus mm -hmm. another forty for sleeping. Right, so what's that? 96. 96. 96. Right. What about showering and travelling? What if you've got kids? An hour, an hour a day. Uh, you know, you, you've got time. You've got eight hours a day free. Do you know what, what I'm I telling think? you? you should, I don't think if you've got no time at all. Some people, genuinely, I might believe, have no time at all. I think you should just sleep one hour less. Do you know what I mean? What are you doing I, from six till seven in the morning? I think you're in bed, then you've it, got time. It, 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 it's it's not easy, and it's it's easier to say this than it is to do it. Of course, but 
there's got to be some level of commitment to your goals no matter what it is and if you're trying to do something that's hard like it's a real statistic that 90% of everybody that loses any weight gains back more than they lost within one year that means 90% of everybody cannot lose weight successfully if you want to lose weight successfully you have to be better than 90% of everyone you have to work hard yeah. and the, the only reason that people want to be slim is because it's hard to achieve and it's not common yeah. people only want things that are rare yeah, this is why this is the only reason why, why people, gold's expensive yeah, it's why people. It's why Ferraris look good. It's because you can't get one. Yeah, and Freaking it, hard work. it's another one thing that I hear people say, and I have taken to just brushing over it and treating it like I don't even understand. Like they're speaking an alien language to put a point across. When people say, "Oh yeah, but that's so hard, isn't it?" I say, well, "Yeah, well, what's your point though?" And they go, oh, "I'm just saying it's, it's so hard." I'm like, "But what's your point? What's Are hard? you telling me anything?" And right. Yeah, but it's so hard to do. I'm like, "All right, yeah. So you know what your counter is to something that's hard." is you freaking work hard yeah you know when you say yeah but it's hard yeah. i just completely pretend like i don't know what they're talking about because it's just a given if you want something you work hard for it what you're saying everything's hard Every, i'm saying Any, anything, anything that's worth having, having is hard, having yeah. is hard. Yeah. Well, I, I, so I, if your excuse, excuse is it's hard that's not an excuse that means that's, you're going after something good that means you're going after something good that means you work hard yeah if you have yeah i mean okay look if you've got a harder job of losing fat for any given genetic uh, predisposed say, biological polycystic ovary system anything like this mm. being a five foot tall woman yeah. who has a work job polycystic ovaries and type 2 diabetes <laughs> okay yeah cool yeah, all right you've got a harder job it can still you get work done. harder it can still get yeah. done and cool i sound like an asshole sat here saying this now but it's for your benefit because yeah you can walk around saying that you've got a harder job but the only person that's going to benefit from it. you working hard is you yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like people use this excuse as if it's benefiting them. Yeah? It's disempowering. Walking around anything. looking for pity points all day. What are pity points going to get you? A pound a week fat loss? No. Yeah. What's hard work going to get you? A pound a week fat loss. More if you work more. Which if you do it efficiently as more. well and set your goals properly. Yeah. So I do sound like an arsehole. I'm aware of that. But it's only to try and get people to understand like that. Sometimes it because it, it's true in it's a so, way. It's, I know. It's harsh, but it's true. This is where my Little, the little autistic head part in my head doesn't understand what when other people talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true as well. Uh, yeah. Like you said, it's two. It's two hours a week basically. It's not. It's not giving your life. Yeah. And if there's, if you sleep eight hours every night, why don't just two nights a week you just sleep seven? Oh my god, yeah. Oh, it's it's. And then you found that time. You got it back. Yeah, and the chances are. If you gave that two hours a week to somebody like you, when you came for personal training, you'd have so much more energy and be so much happier and have so much more motivation yeah. that you'd get everything else done in your life so fast, so much faster and happier and more efficiently that you'd get those two hours back anyway. Snowball effect. Yeah. What we're we talking about. My Agreed. client Rob, I see once a week at the minute on a Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Best day of his week. Again, we've talked about it. Eight o'clock, he gets home. He's on top of the world. This carries over into having a nice breakfast because he's just burned 800 calories and got swole doing it. He's not about to go home and, you know, ha have a shit meal because then he'll just can't, can't predict what he's done. And he's yeah, like, he's I work hard there. Good thing, so he's, yeah. thinking he's not to... even thinking it's hard work to work hard when he gets home because it's just carrying on from what he's done at the gym. Maybe after, he, after what he's done at the gym, probably eating well is not that hard because no, he's, he's already kicked it off well. Yeah, exactly. This happens to me it's as well. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, because it's more progress it's on top more of progress. progress. You get so addicted. People say to me, like, how do you have a 5.30 client in the morning, then a uh, 7 o'clock client, then a 9.30 client, get home, decide that you're not going to eat shit, you eat well, and then have started training yourself by 10 o'clock in the morning, because I'm fucking addicted, man. I'm so addicted to this progress of, oh my God, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, and I've earned 75 quid. I'm going to go home, I'm going to eat, eat uh, 15 grams of protein, I'm going to have started my session, and nearly finished by 12 midday, and I've got nothing else to do in the day, then that's when I started doing these Facebook videos. Because I'm like, well, now I have, I have got the rest of the time of the day to do what I want. So you Snowballs, get I'm like, let's boxing off your work, more, 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 helping more. people, boxing off your own, yeah. eat, box off your nutrition, and then see what the rest of the day does. Two weeks I spent with Karthik. Hard two weeks, best two weeks. At the minute, I'm running once a week with my client Kelly. Oh, um, you doing yeah. cardio? I'm doing cardio. I'm doing cardio. It's How not far fun. can you run? Uh, we got five miles uh, the other day. You ran five miles? Yeah, we didn't stop. That's good. I, didn't I, stop. My longest run is currently yeah. five miles. And again, just the, just the mindset of it. The, the week before that, How we did... How long did it take? It's this is my ego. How long did it take? <laughs> it took us, I think, 50 minutes or something. That's way faster than me. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> and we just, we just went at our own pace. We just sat, kind of dawdled about a bit, but we didn't stop. Um, she's powerful then. She's powerful, she's doing well, really well, yeah, Kelly. Yeah. Um, 
the week before we did 3.8 miles and now and then so all we, all we had progress. to do we were just running one direction one way then turn around doing the other so i said to her right we know we can run 2.5 miles because we ran more than that last time all i want to do is cover five miles this time so we're going to run 2.5 miles towards hillsborough knowing that we can do it because we did more last week then we've just got to get back somehow. Just walk back. Just, I don't care. It, walking. Except we didn't need to walk because it turns yeah. out you could do it. Because once you started, she was already moving yeah. and it wasn't that bad. I forgot which Navy SEAL it is who says, when you think you're done, you're only 40% done. Something like that. Which <laughs> I'm not going to go into that mindset kind of thing because that's another, another conversation that we'll talk about for another freaking three hours. But it's true. <laughs> is, is the long and short of it. it Humans is, are resilient. Yeah, she added 1.2 miles to her run yeah. in a week. Yeah. That's that is more powerful. than you could do if you were working at 100% every time. That is powerful. You know what I mean? I, I failed bench two weeks in a row and I was because I was working at 100% maximum. So we know that the time before wasn't 100% maximum. This time wouldn't have been 100% maximum. It wasn't fun. We both died. I had a shit time doing it. But we're going to do more this week. Because we can. Because we can. Yeah. Humans are resilient. You're right. It's people like sometimes in life you might feel like you're not going to make it, or life's getting on top of you, and stress is too much. But <laughs> you've never even died once. Yeah. And no. neither have I. Are you dead though? I, no, no. I've never even. I've, I've thought many times that like, you think I don't know how I'm going to get through this. When you know when there's stress in life and you oh, don't God, know yeah. what's going to happen, but you'd be surprised what you can do if you just face it down and you just try. I think we should end there. What do you think? Yeah, man. I'm getting too riled up. Thank you for coming. If people, Thank you for uh, me, are you going to come on again? Oh yeah. Good. Oh yeah. Good. We'll sit down. I might make the tea differently. I'll not. You will I'll make it the, differently. I'll put the sweetness into the cup rather than in that, so that you can share. Look at this. It's all cute. It's so all cute. We've got a little plan. You complained everything. about it. He goes and ruins it. You complained about it. Sweeteners are nice. Sweeteners are not It's nice. free and it, it enhances my life with a nice sweet taste. It's got mm. no calories. It's got no detrimental side effects. Don't give a damn. I know you um, don't. So if people want to follow your Facebook page, please do. What is it? Will Hukin Body Architect. There's videos going up four or five times a week. Yeah, nearly every day. Uh, nearly and every day. The, well, something I should point out is that the way these videos work is people ask questions. I put content up no matter whether people ask questions or not, yeah. but it will be an answer to your question if you put it forward. If not, someone else is just getting a question answered. It's free content. Uh, if I'm saying it, It'll be the best of my ability, and if I don't know the answer, I'll just either outsource or just bridge the gap and send you to a more reputable news source. What kind of questions given, could people send in? Anything, anything, literally anything, because if I know the answer, I'll answer it. And if I don't, I'll direct it to someone that does. But generally, it covers fitness, again, being going into sort of bi biomechanist sort of um, workspace and whatever. If, it, that's generally what I sort of revolve around my own working, but anything from if you've got a, a niggle, if you've got weight loss goals, if you've got uh, strength gaining goals, if you've got just like anything you so want to get injuries, in the gym, anything, strength training, anything. I think you're very good at posture. Yes, I'll say that. I think postures. Are, are, I think I've got a client who's doing nothing but posture. A, a, a thing that you're a thing that you're very good with. Um, you're good with injuries. I'll say that as well. Um, yeah, nutrition questions, people can send those into you for sure, yeah. can't they? They can send in training questions. Yeah. I even send you training questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I um, a 1% knowledge base of what you are on nutrition, but I can still help everyone that comes to me. I have a yeah, client with sure. polycystic ovaries and she's still losing fat. That's of almost as, as extreme as it gets in these cases. And she's still losing it is, fat. It is the most extreme. Yeah, if you've got polycystic ovary syndrome, you've got the slowest metabolism of any human. See, I don't even know that it's the most extreme and she's losing it's weight. The, it's the most extreme. So I don't even know that and it's yeah, working. No, I'm, not so so I'm not surprised. Like, I, I yeah. invite people specifically with polycystic ovary syndrome to come and work with me. Because I say to as them, the, the worst your metabolism can be is 40% slower than somebody else's. Yeah. And that freaking sucks, that's true. But if, let's say we're both ladies, I have it, you don't. Are we not? Well, you've got the hair for it. Do I? Um, we've both got polycystic ovary, no, I, we're, we're both ladies, I've got polycystic ovary syndrome, you don't. If you lose two pound a week, and my metabolism, we do the same, we're twins, let's say, or sisters. Cute. And my metabolism is 40% slower than yours, I'm losing 1.2. Yeah. It's still getting it's done. It's still getting done. It's still getting done. And if you it's do want to lose two pounds a week, slower. do it. But what we talked about earlier, work a little bit harder. Work a little bit harder. Yeah, and maybe that's not fair. That's true, but life's not fair. Not fair. That's but the only person to benefit from this unfairness is you. Yeah. The, 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 the hard is what makes it great, is what Tom Hanks says, and the work equals reward, oh doesn't God. it? Um, Toy Story. <laughs> Why did we get onto that about polycystic ovary syndrome? I don't know, man. Um, 
People already know to find you though, don't they? It, this is going on my page. Because they're watching buddy. this on your and, page. Um, <laughs> this is going on my page. Thank you anyway, man. It's been really nice to talk to you. How long have we been on? Always. One hour 20. Yeah. Not bad. Thank you for watching, ladies and Thank gentlemen. Episode me. one, the Slum Society Show. Podcast done. It's exciting stuff. Boom. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. We should have an outro theme tune. Do a tune. <laughs>